everyone, it's Kathy Zilski for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine, and I'm really excited to share with you my Merry Memories template set. Today I am working in Photoshop, full Photoshop, the big daddy, but don't fear, everything that I'm doing can be done in Photoshop Elements. This is a very basic template set, and I want to show you how it works so that you can start working on your own Merry Memories album. This video is really geared towards the hybrid scrapbooker. That is the person who will be using, using a little Photoshop, but printing these things onto cardstock so that you can then add your embellishments and pattern papers. There are two title pages. This template contains the exact fonts that I used, but I have converted them into graphics. They are all paid fonts, they're not free, and so they would not read on a computer unless you had the paid font. So that's why I did that. You can change the color, that you can do, but you cannot type over and change any of that. Now if you want to get into the changing, let's go to just the CZ, oh, look, there we go. This template has been set up with free fonts and you will find links to those in the PDF handout. That way you can customize and you know get your text tool if you wanted to call it you know something else. You could go in and change those as long as you download the free fonts. I'm going to click away here. But I'm going to come back to the CZ template because I want to show you one thing about this template. If you're a digital scrapbooker, you have this lovely outer mat and you can clip in a digital card stock or whatever you like in there. But it, for hybrid, we're gonna turn that off. Turn that off and then you would send this file to print. You wanna print actual size and print it on some nice white card stock. I am a big fan of the Nina Solar White Classic Crest in 80 pound, it's a fantastic, paper, it's bright white, it's very smooth, and it takes ink beautifully. You could print this on craft, whatever you like, and you'll have to see what the red looks like. I've designed a red or picked a red that worked well with the product that I'm using in my album, which is from Simple Stories, but you can play around with different reds and different colors. You can change the color. For example, let's say you wanted to do a green. I could come here, let me make sure there's, yep, I got a green set up. And then you would go edit, fill, and foreground color is set. I would click OK, and now I have a green. So you can change the color, you just can't type over that. But I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to save this for now, because guess what? I'm done. I've already done a title page. That's just to give you an orientation. But the same thing here, if you come in and change your fonts and come up with something that you like, you would turn off that outer mat and send this to print and then use that outline as your trim guide and then you can mount the white cardstock with your type onto your choice of pattern paper. You could also add a thin mat to it as well and that would help you complete your title page. So now I'm going to close that because there's only really, I'm not going to save that, one main template that we are going to focus on for building pages. This template does have all free fonts. So here you would have to have the font or you can substitute any, any that you like and you can change your title, you can change your date, your title can be longer, shorter, whatever you like. Same thing with journaling. Okay, this is all text that is a free font but you can go in and change anything you like. Right now what I have here is a placeholder for your photo. Now the photo size in this album is pretty simple. It's five by three and a half. So you could take any four by six print that you have, trim it down. And in my experience, you know, most of us can, can crop in a little on a photo, right? So th uh, three and a half tall, five wide is the basic photo size. This template is set up so that you will have this nice half inch margin all the way around the page. I like an even margin when I'm designing anything. It just adds a little air, it adds a little white space, so please try to preserve that. This down here is really a placeholder. Now, if you're a digital scrapbooker, you would scrap, you know, clip in your pattern paper there and you'd be good to go. But I'm leaving this in for hybrid for now 
because you really do want your text to fill this box exactly. You don't want to go much deeper, right? Because you're going to add a strip of, you know, it's a half inch by five inches of pattern paper to your finished page. And here's the other cool thing. This design doesn't change. This is your album page, page after page after page. I know what you're thinking, Kat, doesn't that get boring? No, it doesn't get boring because every page has a different photo and you can mix in coordinated pattern paper from page to page to add visual interest. So I'm gonna show you how this works starting in the digital realm all the way to finishing it on my scrapbook table. First things first, I'm gonna bring in a photo. The reason why is I like to have the photo in front of me when I'm, oh, let's see, photos for my album. Oh yeah, there it is, there it is right there. Ah, there she is. I'm just gonna drag this, drag down and release. Now this photo has already been sized to three by five and I'm going to be printing that out separately, but I'm just dropping it in. I'm not even gonna clip it in because I am not making a digital page. But what I am going to do is I'm gonna come in here, oop, let's highlight the text, this, this Nick Ainley free font, and I'm gonna change it to what I'm using for my album because it doesn't make sense for me to not do that. It's a font called Heritage Regular. And I go to the upper area to change this font, but if you're in Photoshop Elements, you will find it in newer versions in the lower area in the, in the tool options. All right, so I'm gonna hit return and there is my font. And I am going to actually call this, hmm, I, I, this is bringing back a lot of memories. This is one of those gift opening things, but all hail the screaming years. Because uh, for those of you who have children, you might recall those mornings on Christmas where there was a lot of screaming, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. I hold down my command control or control key and my space bar to get this fabulous zoom tool. Oh, I forgot I'm in a different program. Okay, here we go. The reason I'm coming in here is that I want to make sure that this little dot guy, I'm gonna move that over just a tiny bit. See, I use my arrow keys and you can move that too. And I'm gonna come in here to the date. This is a free font, but I am gonna go ahead and change it to what I used, which was, I believe, is it Avenir Black? Yeah, it looks right. All right, and the year on this was, oh boy. Now I'm gonna probably have to come back to that one. Actually, that's not true. Let me open. You're seeing the work in progress. Okay, there you go, 2007. I went through my iPhoto library and picked out a number of photos that I am plan to add to this. And there we go, 2007. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little. Commander Control and the, the dash key will get me out. And now I'm going to go ahead and journal my story, but first I'm gonna highlight all my text. And I just do this by clicking in with my text tool, Commander Control A, it will highlight everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead up here and change to my font that I'm using, which is the Archer font. Archer is a paid font, it is not cheap, it is the most beautiful thing ever, and I believe, uh, is it Archer Book? Let's see. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to double check it against the pages that I've already finished. And I'll come back in with my journaling in place and then talk to you a little bit about how to create a custom wrap. Okay, I've gone in and made type changes. I actually had to bump up the size from nine point to 10 point. And again, you can customize this any way you like. I like to have the first line bolded all the time because I just think it adds a nice little bit of visual interest to any journal block. But once you get your journaling set, here's, here's something to keep in mind. So in my album, I have a cute little die cut uh, ornament shape from Lawn Fawn. And in there, I put my sticker numbers. I have this sticker set that goes from, I think, one to 31. And that's part of the coordinated product that I used for this album. And so what I decided to do was I wanted to layer that into every page. Now what that means is I need to make sure that I have enough space and have the type not run into my embellishment. So there are a lot of ways you can do this. One thing I like to do, I just come over and get a shape. Here I'm gonna get the ellipse tool. It doesn't even matter what color it is. And I'm basically gonna guesstimate. Let's say that, okay? 
I put something in place just as a placeholder and then I can come back in here, get my type tool and let's see, I can come in here and just hit a return to get that word down. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll come right in there. I know it's a little hard to see. In fact, maybe let's, let's move that ellipse underneath the journaling so it's easier to see. There we go. Come in here and go ahead and hit return. That is probably going to be fine. And I do realize that I have a little bit more room here that I could hit another return and add in one more line of text, which I probably will do before I send this to print. So I show you this because what you're going to need to do, of course, if you're putting something in that area, any kind of embellishment, is have to make sure that you accommodate for the space. So now I'm going to zoom out, Commander Control, numeral zero. And I'm going to turn this guy off and I'm going to go ahead and just, yeah, I can delete that because I'm not going to use that. And I can turn off photo here. Now I am going to add in one more line before I actually print this. But when I do print this, I am going to also turn off that bar. Okay. So that all I'm printing is the text because this is going to be my base page. And when you send this to print, you'll go command or control P. And this will look different in every uh, in Photoshop Elements, but there is an option for, let's see, for me on here, if I scroll down, I can get corner crop marks. And in Photoshop Elements, there is a screen and it says options or other, I'll actually, I'll actually include that in the PDF for those Photoshop Elements users, because now when I print this, it is going to give me that lovely guide for trimming my page to six by eight. And when I print, I want to make sure that I'm going, uh, let's see, just 100%. Don't scale to fit the media. Don't change any of your settings. You want to print in your actual size. And then once you do, we are ready to take this page down to the actual workspace and begin building. I'll see you there. All right, I'm down now on my workspace table and I have my printout of both the journal and the photo. And these are the crop marks. Now these trim marks are just used to get your page to the proper side. I always use a metal ruler and an X-Acto knife. If you just have a regular paper trimmer, line it up in your paper trimmer, the top mark and the bottom mark, pop your blade in, but don't go all the way through. Does that make sense? Because then it will give you the guides on all four sides. So this is trimmed out and it comes to a perfect six by eight. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the crop marks on my photo as well. They're very small, but I can just make them out. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this photo down to be five inches wide by three and a half tall. And now it will fit right on top there. See that nice, even margin of space that's built into the template. And I just think it looks really nice on any page. Now I am working with this very merry collection from Simple Stories and the papers are wonderful. There's just so many to choose from. And I'm going to go with the green polka dot as I've used some of the other strips already in the album. Now I'm going to trim this to five inches wide and I save all my scraps. So this everything left over will just be for this album and other projects. But I'm going to move this over one half inch on my trimmer and that will give me a five by half inch strip that will fit on the bottom. The other thing I'm doing is cutting out some ornaments using this really adorable stitched ornament set from Lawn Fawn. I'm just creating little, little ornaments and those will be holding all the page numbers as you've also seen if you've seen the article. I think it's super cute. But the other thing that I have to do is I have to make a little silver top. Now I don't have any silver paper but rest assured, I have the skills and the know-how people. I'm going to just use some silver embossing powder here, like make a little swatch using the Versamark sticky ink. And this is just a piece of scrap paper that I pulled out of my scrap bin. Get a good coating down there and just put the powder on. Get that on there, shake it off. I don't know why I put the uh, coffee filter there. It turns out I didn't even need it, so that went back. And now I'm just gonna heat set this Get it all melty and you can see that good magical melty that happens. And now I have a nice little silver square and I can die cut, I think probably like four more little tops 
out of that swatch. I could have done a bigger swatch too, but I've already, I've already created some off camera. But I'm gonna run that through my Big Shot, and voila, add a little bit of my dot adhesive, and then just put that on top of my little stitched ornament, and this will give me my little, my little embellishment to put my number sticker on as I continue to order all of my pages one through however many. Super cute. And that's the basic layout. Um, the strip at the bottom is uh, gonna be a little too wide, but you can see how the text shifted down to accommodate for that ornament that I'm using. And again, you might use a, you know, a circle punch or whatever you decide to do. You can, you can play with that and get creative. But I'm gonna go ahead now and just adhere my elements. I love uh, Kokio adhesive. I've been a dot roller uh, fan for years and this has been probably my favorite brand. Get that on there. Make sure those top margins and side margins are equal. I always stand up directly over my page and look down. I do the same thing down here. I wanna make sure that margin is the same on the side and the bottom, and that will give me a nice framing space. Smooth that down and then go ahead and put in the ornament. Little glue on that and just, again, get it right in position there and press it down. And now I'm gonna take, I've already used numbers one through four, but I'm gonna take the number five, because this is page number five. And what I'm gonna do is take my sticker and use this fantastic powder tool from EK Success to put on the back, in essence, to take the sticky off the sticker. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't wanna stick something down and then feel like, ah, oh, I totally messed it up. And also, I just want to put some thin foam adhesive on the back because I want to pop that up just to give it a little more. You know, just, just push it a little over the edge. And now I'm going to take my little Tim Holtz craft pick. I love using this to just help me clearly get my fingers out of the way and see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to press it down. And there you have it. The number's in place and the page is finished. And there you have one album page. You can see the rest at scrapbookingcards.com. The link is below in the information. I hope this inspires you to make a Merry Memories album of your own. Thanks for watching, everyone.